Hey, hey, look at that, guys. It's sunny out, zero degrees, everything's melting. And last week I told you guys on one of our snow walks that I was toying with the idea of buying the new Sony 200 to 600. And quite a few of you guys were like, hey, man, just do it. You know what? Uh, your lens collection, you're the camera guy, it's part of who you are. I'm like, yeah, you know, I am. And then Karen said, Gary, stop justifying. If you have the money and you want to enjoy it, do it. So I did it, and it just came in. It got here, it's a day early, and now we gotta be quick. We're gonna throw this on the tripod and get out there and test out this freaking awesome Sony piece of tech. I'm a little worried about the shape of this box, and it was actually open. This part here was open. See, it's broken there. Oh, God. Hopefully the lens itself is going to have some kind of styrofoam protection on it. Should be paperwork in there. Usually in Sony boxes... Okay. Um... We also got a new strap and a new lens pouch. Oh, that's why this, okay, this was in here. That fell out of the box. I couldn't figure out why this was in the bottom of the other box. Gotcha. Oh, it's all bubble wrapped. That's good. Oh, look at this thing. It's a beast. Okay, about four and a half pounds. $2,000 worth of Sony G glass right there. Substantial. I believe that's true. I was just having a nap. Okay, in this box here, I actually bought, you have to buy a actual Arca Swiss foot for this lens. It's kind of silly that Sony still sends you the old generic foot and then you have to put a plate on here or you swap the whole thing out for $87 with one of these Arca Swiss plates. And there is the new Arca Swiss plate. Oh, it even looks sharp with the new plate installed on it. Okay, we're going to put it on our gimbal. That's how we're going to use it today. So, guys, I bought my Tamron 150-600 back in 2018. The year before, I had just purchased the A7R3. So this is the A7R4 here, so we upgraded that last year. And that is why I never bought this lens. It's a thing of beauty. When you actually own a Sony lens on Sony cameras, it makes uh, quite a bit of a difference uh, in terms of the amount of frames. They'll, they'll let you shoot 30 frames per second on some cameras. This camera here will only do 10 frames a second, but I was taught how to shoot photography on film cameras. And to me, 10 seconds is more than enough. I've been trained and taught to wait for that moment, to wait for the bird or the animal to turn a certain way and catch the light. Then you start shooting because film was always expensive. And once you have those skills, I don't need more than 10 frames a second. But it is nice to have, and if someday we do get a faster body, this Sony will allow us, you know, blazing speeds. I think the new Sony A9, guys, will do 120 frames a second. And that's the truth. It will. 120. Who? I don't know who needs that, but somebody out there is saying, I need that. I don't need that. But anyway, back to this lens. I can tell you guys right now, I've just taken a couple of photos here in the yard. At 600 millimeters, it is sharper than my old beloved Tamron, okay? This thing will autofocus a lot faster because it doesn't need an adapter. It was made for E-mount. Uh, yeah, I've only been using it for 10 minutes. I'm not blown away by the focus speed. I thought, I don't know, maybe I hyped it up a little more than I thought. Keep in mind, this is a $2,000 lens, okay? So it's not like, um, it's a very good lens and that is expensive, but in terms of photography lenses, uh, there are more expensive, the, the F, 2.8 300 millimeter, $8,299. And I actually thought about getting that lens, guys, and I was like, no, I, I can't justify that in any way ever. 
The F4 600 millimeter is $16,799. So we're gonna stick with the $2,000 lens and uh, that is gonna do everything that this guy needs it to do. Uh, beautifully balance on this gimbal. Okay, and, and the nice thing is this is an internal zooming lens. So when I zoom in and out, it doesn't extend. And right away, I'm like, that is impressive. I'm used to my Tamron where you zoom in and it gets longer, it gets heavier on the front. Nope, this thing stays balanced. So once you balance it once on the gimbal, it's always balanced because nothing is changing. The length, the, the weight isn't shifting. It just stays balanced. Well, Gage was out there on top of the septic about 70 yards away. And I called him and took a few shots as he was running back towards me. Really bright, terrible conditions today. And I forgot to put the camera on burst mode. So it was like one picture one picture but it had no problem the autofocus actually okay the uh, the autofocus i think is impressive because i could tell it was just locked on him um if i had it on burst mode right now we'd have 150 photos of gage uh, tongue hanging out running towards us Here's Gage, I'm zoomed in 600 millimeters as he's running towards me. Look at how sharp this is. That uh, A7R4 and the 200-600 had no problem tracking him. Let's go into 100% and you can see individual whiskers on his chin, icicles on his whiskers, the tongue. You can read his rabies tag print near. Amazingly sharp. I'm very impressed with that at 600 millimeters. Now, I will mention also, uh, thanks Karen for telling me to just buy what I want. I have also purchased the 1.4 teleconverter for this as well. So that's another extender, basically. We're going to get another 280 millimeters of reach with the 1.4 teleconverter. That's not coming in until later this week, but we'll be, we're going to be playing with this lens so much. I'm going out with the local photo club on Wednesday. Guess which lens I'm bringing? And I might have something else coming in the mail too. Uh, and normally I would have to say this quietly because my wife would not be in the know, but she also, like Karen, said, Gary, stop faffing about, as the English would say, and just buy what you want. So guys, we now have a brand new Sony A... No, no Sony... <laughs> we now have a brand new Sony R5 coming. I'm so excited I couldn't even say it. So I love my R4 and I loved my R3 before it, but each year they get better and better. And we, you guys know we bought back in October the ZV-E1 as our new film camera. And the features on that camera, the autofocus, the AI chip that's in there, lets you, um, it detects and knows humans, planes, trains, insects, animals, and birds. And will I autofocus on any of those that have eyes? Okay, and so the new Sony A, I keep saying that, the new Sony R5 will do those same things, and the most important feature for me is going to be the bird eye autofocus. I've never had that in a camera, and I think that is, it's going to be a game changer, especially, you know, with this new G lens. So at four and a half pounds, uh, it's very similar to the Tamron and other lenses that I put on the tripod and carry over my shoulder. The new 300 2.8 is actually lighter, and if you put a two times teleconverter on it, guys online were saying it's sharper, um, it's focused even faster than this lens because it's got newer dual motors on it, etc. etc. And uh, it was tempting, but guys, the price barrier alone, I'm not shooting sports events all year long. I do have four events lined up for the hospital. That's about the only corporate client that I've retained for this year. And I would I couldn't even pay for that lens with the events that I'm gonna do this year for them. Um so you know it's that's not an option. Realistically, it's not an option. And this thing there are a million reviews online that show how sharp and how fast and gorgeous and awesome this lens is. 
Guys, I'm shooting in some pretty harsh conditions right now, and I'm shooting some really mundane stuff because I just want to go on the computer and pixel peep and see how sharp is this lens, even though I know all of the reviews say it is 10 out of 10 sharp. I just want to show you guys a couple of shots here on the computer. This is 450 millimeters, icicles on the roof, and look at how sharp this lens is when we zoom into 100%. You can see individual drops of water coming off those icicles. Just amazing. I'm impressed. And if we zoom in, there's 300%. You can see an individual water drop. So I ended up buying this lens on Amazon. And I just want to say, um, if you buy it directly from Sony, it's a $25.99 lens plus tax. So you're looking at, you know, $2,800 Canadian. I got it on Amazon for $2,084, which means it's what they call a gray market lens. Okay. So it's coming from Japan from the exact same factory. It's a Sony lens. However, it's not sold through a Canadian or American retailer. So you're going to have problems if you try to get your warranty. Now, how long is the warranty? It's only one year. So their warranties don't mean much anyway. If something were to go wrong with the lens, I can still pay to get it fixed. However, on Amazon, they have a pretty darn amazing deal. They sell warranties. $108 got me a three-year money-back warranty on Amazon. So if anything goes wrong with this, they're basically going to say, we can't fix it because there is no shop that they're sending it to here you automatically get your money back. And I did a bunch of research, guys, and people were saying, yep, it worked. The warranty works. And it is all legal and binding, sold through Amazon. So guess what? That's what I ended up doing. So with the warranty and the foot, the uh, Leo Photo foot that we put on there, I still paid less than the retail without the taxes, uh, buying that here at like Henry's or at a retail store. So we still saved about $500. The A7R5, which we will talk about when it comes in, and I'll show you guys, you know, some of the functionality of that thing. I kind of did the same thing. Gray market through a Japanese seller with their own three-year warranty. And I've done that before with lenses. I've never had an issue. I've never had any product fail. So if it does, we'll cross that bridge when it happens. Worst case scenario, I would send it into a place here and get it fixed on my dime if something goes wrong with it. Um, and the warranty I think that came with this lens is actually accidental, uh, covers accidental breakage as well. Tell everybody where you spent the weekend. You were with Grandpa. And what did you eat? His socks? Yep, both of them. How'd that work out for you? You're just starting to feel better now, eh? <laughs> so the lens is quite hand holdable as well. I didn't put the straps on it so I could carry it on my shoulder because we've got the tripod, but then a nice uh, great big downy woodpecker flew in and he's up there. He's in terrible lighting in a terrible spot, but I'm just taking a couple snaps just to see if we can crop in and see how sharp this thing is. Zoomed all the way in and then cropped in. And that's the beauty of owning the a7R4 and 5 is there's 61 megapixel cameras. We can do that. Okay, so that woodpecker is in the dark shaded tree up there behind us. And I'm just going to give up on trying to get any better shots because of the angle and the, the shade. We're not going to get any award-winning photographs of that guy. But I just want to zoom in, crop in as much as we can at 600 millimeters and see, is it sharp? I think it's going to be. I'm really liking this lens. I love that slick tripod as well. It uh, goes right, the legs go right out flat so you can get the tripod set up right down low to the ground. I want to do a close focus test here just to see how sharp the lens is up close. So the one thing that my Tamron did that this lens doesn't that I really enjoyed on the old one 50 to 600 was direct manual over override. So you could turn the focus ring at any time and that would adjust your focus. This one, you can't do that. It's the same as the new Tamron. The new Tamron is the same, 
I've got my camera set up to push one button here on the back and that switches between autofocus and manual focus. So I have to push that button first, then I can do a manual focus adjustment. Not a big deal. Super stoked to use this lens and try it out guys, but not a lot to shoot out here. Again, it's still winter, right? We, we, it, it's abnormal. I mean, it feels like spring, but it's not spring. And so there are still no animals around. No songbirds, nothing has nothing close to migrating back here for another two months. But like I say, northern hawk owl hunt coming up next week. And we're going to get out to the escarpment with the other guys in the local photo group. And I may go see Jen to do some snowy owl hunting in Ottawa because now I've got the new setup here. So if we go see Jen, I'll probably end up bringing the cowoscope as well. And we do some digiscoping with the phone and try to get some nice 4K video of the owls. Um, that's something else I want to do. Lots of options. The world is our oyster, guys. It's winter, but I'm trying to make the best of it this year. Do any of you guys save your boxes when you get new electronics? I've been saving my boxes for like 20 years. And just last week when I started going through the camera gear and decided I was going to sell some of it, and I gave the girls each a, a camera, I got rid of about a third of the boxes. And guys, it... It upset me to get rid of my boxes. Did you see the size of the box this lens came in? My wife's gonna kill me.